Speaking of which, the entire left has decided that their generalized feelings of discomfort about Mike Huckabee and the former Arkansas governor, 2016 presidential cam- candidate, he, he had some harsh words for President Obama on the Iran nuclear deal. And naturally, the left is significantly less worried about President Obama putting Israel in the crosshairs, six million Jews in the crosshairs. Not, not super worried about that, but very, very worried about President Obama's tender feelings because you wouldn't want to hurt those feelings by saying, oh, I don't know, that he's facilitating the possibility of genocide against Jews. Here's what Huckabee originally said. This president's foreign policy is the most feckless uh, in American history. Uh, he's so naive, he would trust the Iranians and he would take the Israelis and basically march them to the door of the oven. And, uh, and, and that comment, of course, got President Obama going, got him very upset. Because it's one thing for President Obama to do something deeply evil and immoral, like facilitate an Iranian genocide against the Jews. It's another thing for him to be called on it. And this is for the entire left. If, if you're more worried about President Obama's feelings, that it's, it's just, it's, it's so, it's a breach of decorum. That Huckabee said this? If you're more worried about that than you are about the fact that the President of the United States just handed $150 billion a year over to the Iranians. If you're more worried about Huckabee's comments than you are about the fact that President Obama's deal allows the Iranians to develop a nuclear bomb, no consequences in 10 years. If you're more worried about about Mike Huckabee being mean to President Obama than you are about the fact that Secretary of State John Kerry couldn't even answer a question in front of the Senate Foreign Relations Committee as to whether the United States would have to defend Iran from Israeli attack under the agreement? You know, if, you don't know, if you don't know if that's a toss-up to you, you're part of the problem. And President Obama said he's very sad. He's just saddened. I mean, it, it, because the president has never used inflammatory rhetoric, ever. It's not like the president polarizes us along racial lines, proclaims the cops are racists, suggests that, that Republicans want to deprive people of their health care, Suggests that he put his boot on the throat of BP. Suggests that his followers bring a gun to a knife fight and punch people who disagree. And the president has never spoken in inflammatory fashion ever. He's the moderate. I mean, he's, the, he's the embodiment of all that is moderation and taciturnity. Here is the president of the United States ripping Mike Huckabee. The particular comments of, uh, of Mr. Huckabee uh, are... I think part of just a general pattern that we've seen that uh, is uh, would be considered uh, ridiculous if it weren't so sad. No, it would be considered ridiculous, but it's sad. That's sad and ridiculous. It's not sad and ridiculous, by the way. It's sad to make the Holocaust analogy, not to actually participate in facilitating the Holocaust analogy. By the way, there are some people out there who say you can never, you can never cite Hitler. Never, ever, ever cite Hitler. First of all, yes, you can. You can cite Hitler when it applies. Okay, otherwise, the history becomes meaningless. There's this, this idiotic idea that's taken root in political culture where Hitler is the one thing you can never say. If you say Hitler, you lose, right? This is Godwin's law. If you say Hitler, you lose. Well, what if the person's doing something Hitlerian, though? And what if it turns out that the Iranian regime is threatening to, do exa- to finish Hitler's job? What if it turns out that the, the Iranian regime has declared it wants to wipe six million Jews from the map? Can we mention Hitler at that point or no? Is that also forbidden? Because that's what they're saying. By the way, at least the Germans who marched the Jews to the doors of the chambers, at least the Germans who did that, presumably, presumably they had a gun at their back and if they deserted, they'd be shot. President Obama is handing over the ability for the Iranians to gain a nuclear bomb in 10 years, facilitate the rise of Hamas and Hezbollah, hands off a nuclear bomb or further weaponry to all these people who want to murder Jews. And there's no gun to Obama's head. There's no gun to his back. He's the most powerful man in the history of world, the president of the United States, because the United States is more powerful than any country in the history of the world. And he's the most powerful president in American history. And he is supposed to be some sort of victim here. The president could take a stand against Iran. He could take a stand, but he's not going to. President Obama is not even close to as good, a a decent a human being as Neville Chamberlain. This isn't Munich, folks. This is Appomattox Courthouse. This is full-scale surrender to the people who are evil, okay? It's Appomattox Courthouse in reverse. It's full-scale surrender to the bad guys. But the president of the United States, he's very offended by this sort of language, you know, because, because that's really what matters here. What matters here is the manner in which things are spoken, not that you're facilitating genocide. Hillary Clinton did the same thing. Oh, she's, she's very frustrated with Mike Huckabee. Huckabee is the bad guy. By the way, notice, 
that President Obama, Hillary Clinton, the language they use with regard to Mike Huckabee and the Republicans, much, much, much harsher than the language they ever use with response to the genocidal Iranian regime, which, by the way, over the weekend tweeted out that President Obama would be killing himself would he try to go to war with Iran. Comments like these are offensive and they have no place in our political dialogue. This kind of um, inflammatory rhetoric, totally unacceptable. Uh, one can disagree with the particulars of the uh, agreement to put a lid on the nuclear weapons program uh, of Iran, and that is fair game. But this steps over the line. This steps over the line. So, so in other words, it doesn't step over the line when Hillary Clinton, it's just unbelievable. It didn't step over the line when Hillary Clinton drew a red line in Ukraine that was violated. It didn't step over the line when Hillary Clinton drew a red line in Syria that was violated. It didn't step over the red line when, um, when she facilitated the murder of four Americans in Benghazi because she didn't provide adequate security. It didn't step over the red line when Hillary Clinton facilitated the rise of ISIS, didn't step over the red line when Hillary Clinton moved to imprison a YouTube filmmaker because she's incompetent and got four of her own people killed, including Chris Stevens. No, no, no. What goes over the red line is Mike Huckabee compared this to the Holocaust. By the way, Bibi Netanyahu has routinely cited the Holocaust as a, as a backdrop for this because what else are you going to cite? Of course, this is like the Holocaust, the, the run-up to it. Well, you have one nation that's, that's routining, uh, routinely telling the world over and over and over, yeah, by the way, we want to murder all the Jews. And you've got the rest of the world going, no, you, you can't. No, you, you sillies. No. To Huckabee's credit, by the way, he is not running away from his comments. He says, pretty clear, President Obama doesn't like Israel. I think he is naive, especially when it comes to radical Islam. He won't even call it by its name. And I do not think he likes Israel. Now, he can say whatever he wants to, but he puts more pressure on Israel for someone building a bedroom onto a house in Judea or Samaria than he does on the Iranians who are trying to build a bomb, for God's sake. And this, of course, is exactly right. This, of course, is exactly right. Now, the Israelis are doing what the Israelis have to do. They're saying, we don't think that the comments are super appropriate because we're capable of defending ourselves. But, but the reality is, the reality is that, of course, the comments are not just appropriate, they're factually correct. They're factually correct. And I have to say that Jeb Bush is not winning himself any fans by doing his routine. You know what Jeb Bush said about this? Jeb Bush says, this kind of language doesn't win elections. Well, pardon me. Pardon me, Jeb, if I don't, if I don't buy your rationale for why you don't use harsh language with regard to the Iran deal. Pardon me if I don't believe the guy who has James Baker on his foreign policy staff. Pardon me if I don't believe the guy who recently said that he wouldn't reject the Iran nuclear deal on day one. And Charles Krauthammer, who's no great shakes when it comes to being harsh in his rhetoric, he said that Mike Huckabee clearly is right on the subject. Look, two points. As a general principle, the Holocaust is such an act of incandescent, incandescent, unfathomable evil that it should not be invoked lightly. And second, the formulation that Huckabee had, which is that Obama was marching the Israelis to the door of the oven, had the implication that it wasn't intended, but it could be interpreted as that Obama's doing it deliberately. You can argue that he doesn't understand the gravity, etc. And so I think in, the, in that sense that those are not the words he should have used. Nonetheless, the idea that somehow there's something utterly impermissible about invoking the uh, Holocaust in this case because it's some kind of wild analogy, this is a reality. The Iranians are obsessed with the Holocaust. And, and by the way, Krauthammer is, is wrong in the sense that when he says Obama's just naive, that, that Obama just doesn't know the consequences. Of course Obama knows the consequences. I, I'm sorry, I'm sick of playing this game where Obama's alternatively the, the biggest dumbass on the planet or the biggest genius on the planet. He's either smart or he's stupid. Yeah, I happen to think the president of the United States is kind of smart. I think that Obama's actually a pretty smart guy. I think he knows exactly what's going to follow, and he's fine with what is going to follow. But no, 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 it's, it's, it's the rhetoric. And, and this is the game the media play all the time, and it's just sickening. They won't talk about the actual provisions of the Iran nuclear deal, but they'll talk over and over and over about, ooh, somebody said something mean about Obama. Somebody said something, what are we, what are we middle school now? If you can't take it, don't be president of the United States. And if you can't defend it, don't make the deal. The president of the United States signed a deal with a genocidal regime that wants to murder 6 million Jews. If that's not a bigger problem to you than Mike Huckabee invoking a situation in which Western regimes signed a deal with a regime that wanted to kill 6 million Jews, I don't know what to tell you. You're the problem. As we continue here on The Ben Shapiro Show... See